Let's dive into what's going on with Corbin Carroll. An explosive athlete with plus bat speed, Carroll has always outslugged his frame, but he also has a great feel to hit. His blend of hit power and speed is what made him the unanimous National League Rookie of the Year last season. Carroll has always featured a big leg kick, but he controlled it well, holding his backside and using the ground effectively to maximize his impact. Comparing last year's swing to this year's, there's a clear difference in his body position at foot stride. He's always gained plenty of ground with that leg kick, but he's now over striding. Carroll gained so much ground that the bottom of his back foot actually comes off of the ground before the barrel gets moving forward and the angle of his back knee really stands out here to show you the impact that that has on his lower half. Another result of the weight shift forward prior to his hands launching is the barrel actually getting stuck behind him. Using the same video you can see the angle of Carroll's bat being slightly more vertical with his 2023 swing and not wrapped as far around his back shoulder which can make it a lot easier to enter the zone at the right angle and also just enter the zone quicker given the short shorter distance that the barrel has to travel and the more preferred vertical bat angle. With his old swing, his barrel moves forward as he rotates, while in this year's video, you may notice his belt buckle already facing the pitcher despite the barrel still being behind him. The barrel lag and drift forward will tend to flatten out the path and create more struggles at the top of the zone, as well as make the hitter feel more rushed and struggle to pull hard stuff. On top of the bat path issues, being so wide at foot strike also results in Carroll feeling like he's working uphill to cover the top half of the zone, a part of the zone that he covered much more effectively last year and has been a huge problem for him this year. He posted an OPS over 1,000 on four seamers 30 inches high and above in 2023, and so far this season, Carroll has an OPS under 400 on these same pitches. A quick look at the spray charts against fastballs 30 inches and above likely only makes pitchers more confident that they could beat the all-star outfielder with their heater. Through the first 50 games of the season, Carroll has seen a 6% uptick in four seam fastballs, along with a 5% increase in fastballs located at the top third of the zone, and to go with that, he has more more than doubled his pop-up rate this season. He's seen similar increases in fastballs on the inner half with two strikes, which will only compound the feeling of a hitter needing to cheat for velocity, which not only impacts fastball chase rates, but also leaves him more susceptible to expanding on sharp breaking balls as well. Feeling the need to decide earlier, Carroll has seen his fastball and slider chase rates jump by 7% and 13% respectively. In terms of contact point, he's catching fastballs deeper and sliders further out front, which not only impacts the quality of contact, but also results in that hitter feeling like he's caught in between. The D-backs and Carroll have remained adamant that his past shoulder issues have nothing to do with this slump, and after diving further into the swing mechanics and batted ball data, it checks out to me as well. Likely the first prolonged adversity the 23-year-old has faced in his baseball career, making swing adjustments of note may be uncharted territory for him, but he's one of the game's most talented young players and should be just fine in the grand scheme, even if it is a little bit of a process.